look. any more painful than it has to be. You know, I've taken extremely good care of that car. I can't understand why it just conked out on me. Well, uh, cars are sometimes like people. I mean, one day they're nice, the next day... Uh... <laughs> well, anyway, thank you for trying to fix it and for bringing me over here. Hey, Sarah, please, don't mention it. Sarah, can you your phone? Mark's really upset, and I just don't know how to handle it. See my office? Yes, and I think it's just about at the breaking point. Okay, you two stay here. Why the hell did you keep me waiting so long? Come on in. I'm sorry I'm running a little bit late. You tigers are going to have, have to have a little patience with me, little that's all. tigers? I haven't been called that in a long time. Megan. I'm sorry. I thought it was the children. They've been anxious to go to the party. Well, they should be. It's a very good barbecue. Really? You've been there already and left? Yes, I was waiting for you to arrive, but when you didn't show up, I asked Bo to drive me over here. I thought maybe that you'd like to see this. What is it? Well, it's a box of mementos that Max came across while we were looking for the antidote in Eterna. It was hidden in the throne of Danton Gordon. I found this and thought you might like to read it. A letter? To Danton. It was written by your father. Say, you ready for some great news? I think Pa and Pike have uh, patched things up. Just saw him smoking a peace pipe about an hour ago. Is that great? It's good. It's good. I'm. I'm happy for Pa and Uncle Pike. It's a tough room. <clears throat> Want some better news? I think Megan's finally ready to accept Vicky uh, as her mother. She was anxious to get out of that party and get over here and talk to Vicky. Now, that, that is great. Clint, you got to hold down the enthusiasm here. Oh. Uh, sorry, Bo, I just got more important things on my mind. More important? Vicky's been hoping and praying for this, Clint. Aren't you happy about it? Yeah, of course. I'm happy for both of them. I'd be a whole hell of a lot happier if I knew where Vicky stood with Megan's father. You still upset about what Vicky said to him in the hospital? <laughs> My wife tells another man she's in love with him, and I shouldn't be upset? Well, no, we talked all about that. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I know what you said. The reason that she told him uh, what she told him was because he was on his deathbed and she was trying to keep him alive by giving him something to hold on to. That's right. So forget it. I can't forget it, Bo. I can't forget it! Again, I congratulate you on being appointed to the governorship of Eterna. I've recommended you wholeheartedly to the consortium. Your honesty, compassion, and sense of democracy is precisely what we need from a man in your position. Well, obviously, Victor didn't know what power would do to a man like Danton. Well, he must have had some idea, because he goes on to say, here, I cannot emphasize too strongly that Eterna belongs to the people. You must allow them the freedom to voice their opinions and to have a hand in the direction their city will take. Then, and only then, will they forge a new world for themselves and the others that will follow after them. Well, then the consortium had full intention of rotating the volunteers. Yes, they must have. 
At the end of the year, when you and your pioneers are replaced by others, we expect future volunteers to call Eterna their home. Once more, congratulations, good luck, and enjoy your stay. Yours truly, Victor Lord. Well, it almost sounds like the consortium was the good guys. <laughs> almost. <laughs> Although their reasons for building Eterna were hardly honorable, Obviously, they had no intention of keeping the Eternans trapped underground forever. Well, and obviously, Victor didn't have anything to do with Danton's takeover. Well, not according to this letter. But that still doesn't absolve my father. I mean, he had a hand in building Eterna in the first place, and what's far worse than that, he never lifted one finger to help those people once old Danton trapped them underground. Well, do you think he knew? Oh, sure he knew. Of course he knew. I'm sure my father considered Eterna to be another one of his investments. And he always kept tabs on his investments. He knew. So, Danton Gordon was a power-hungry madman, and Victor Lord would do anything for a buck. <laughs> Great set of grandfathers, huh? I'm sorry, Megan. I realize it's not always easy to learn unpleasant truths about people that you want to love and respect. But I think you also have to keep in mind that no one is all good or all bad. Everybody has two sides. I know my father certainly had a bad side, but he also had a good side, the side that people liked and respected. Well, right about now, that's a side of him I'd like to hear more about. I'd be more than happy to tell you anything you want to know. I'm surprised you rang the bell. Would have expected you to march upstairs and take my son and run off. Look, I did not come here to start a fight, all right? Of course, you have every reason to be magnanimous, you won. It was never meant to be a battle. Oh, the hell, it wasn't. <laughs> you used every dirty trick you could. Look, I hated handing that tape over to the judge. You left me no choice. You couldn't get out on your own merit, so you pulled me aside and started me talking about how I was blackmailing you with the journal. <laughs> All the while, you were tape recording our conversation without my knowledge. That was a real Max Holden prank. <laughs> I have I... to take my hat off to you. It was, uh, it was terrific. I admit I took it too far. But so did you when you used Roger's life as a bargaining tool. Hey, I'm sorry. It won't happen again. Carol, don't you shrug this off, please. Think about what you've done these last few months. Try to learn from the mistakes you've made. I mean, try to take some time and get your priorities straight. And then what? And then you pull yourself together and try to start over. Pull myself together? And how do I do that? How do I pull myself together, Max, after I've lost my son? How do I go on without Al? I might as well be dead. I'm sorry I kept you waiting. I uh, had some car trouble. God. Well, you, you call that trouble, at least you can still drive. You know, I used to drive for a living. You know, but, 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 but cops get antsy when they see you trying to steer with one of these, you know? Look, I know that you're frustrated and you're having a difficult time adjusting with... Hey, listen, I'm blind, damn it! I'm blind, Sarah. Blind is forever. You're alive. You could have been killed in that accident. Do you know how lucky you are to be alive? What do you call this alive, huh? This is alive. I've lost my job. I have to depend on this, this, this stick to get around with. And I hate the pity that I hear in my friends' voices whenever they, they take the trouble to even attempt to talk to me anymore. Mark, some people can't deal with other people's handicaps. Now, we've talked about that. that, that that's not your problem. No, no. It's your problem. Sarah, you promised that I, I'd be able to adjust, but I can't adjust. I, I bump into things, I walk into walls, I, I get lost. I feel like I'm completely helpless. Here, give me the cane. Give me the cane. Look, I want to help you. But I can't if you won't let me. Look, what can you do for me? What can anyone do for me? I feel like I'm, I'm useless. I feel like I'm half a man. I can't even, I can't even look into my girlfriend's eyes and, and tell her how much I love her. You gonna help me to adjust to that? Huh? Sir, I feel like I'm losing her. Okay. I, I can't 
cannot believe the way Sarah is taking care of this blind guy. Sarah gives everything she has when it comes to her patients. Yeah. I can see that. She's told me she loves me, she needs me, all that. She said she's going to devote herself to me and the kids now that Roger is all cured. There you have it. Now, what could be better than that? Having him gone out of our lives forever. He is the father of Vicky's daughter. He's not just going to fade off into the sunset. I realize that. I know that, but it's killing me, Bo. It kills me every time I see her staring off into space. And I know what she's thinking about. She's thinking about him. It's like he still owns a part of her. How do you know that Vicky's thinking about Roger? Because every time I ask her about it, she flat denies it. You know, you've got to stop looking for trouble, and you've got to start trusting Vicky a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, maybe I could... Maybe I could do that if she had just leveled with me about her little bedside confession. No, that wasn't a confession. Oh, I know. It was a theory. It's your theory, right? But that's all it is, Bo, a theory. You know, you've got to quit pushing it. You've got to... You've got to give her the space to work this whole thing out, Clint. Oh, even though she's in love with another man? No, you don't know that for a fact. Well, then it's about damn time I found out, isn't it? No, Clint, let it go. You're going to end up driving yourself crazy. No! What's driving me crazy is not knowing, sitting around here waiting for the, the other boot to drop. One way or the other, I got to know, Bo. I got to know. You're speaking nonsense. You've got every reason in this world to go on living. There's only one reason to go on, and he's upstairs taking a nap. But when you take him away, I've got nothing left. Why are you acting like I'm taking him away forever? Aren't you? Of course I'm not. I want you to be part of his life. Oh, yeah, the part that breezes in and breezes out whenever she's allowed to. Let's face it, I'll just be a casual guest in my son's life. I never want him to feel that way about you. Well, you know, it's not up to you. Because slowly but surely, he'll grow away from me. <laughs> you know, he can't how to love me. You're his mother. He's never going to stop loving you. I'll make sure he doesn't. I promise. How can you promise that? Because I care about you. Do you? Do you really care about me? Yes. You're the mother of my child. Then let's forget the past. Let's forget all the pain we put each other through. Let's forget the custody battle. Let's forget the judge. Let's forget the blackmail. No, let's no, we're not going to go. Decision. We're not going through this again. This time would be different. No. Wouldn't it? No, why? Why? It won't work. Why not? Because it has never worked before. And every time Al ends up stuck in the middle. From now on, I'm thinking of what's right for him first. And what's right for him is to keep him away from me, right? Hey, don't let him get too close to that evil woman. It might rub off on him. Why? Why do you keep putting these words because in my mouth? Because it's exactly what you're thinking. You know, you come in here with these gentle words and reassurance, but it's only to lull me into believing that you're sincere. By God, you're transparent. You don't want him to be any part of my life, do you? But when you take him out of here, I'll never get to see him again, will I? Gabriel, if you were just... And in the to meantime, me, you will have such fun watching me in pain, won't you? What are you talking about? You can't fool me. I know you far too well. All this, oh, what's best for Al. It's never been that. It's been revenge from the very beginning. You despise me! Well, guess what, buddy? You got your chance. Now you can destroy me by taking my son away from me. <laughs> you know, I have been so blind for so long. You planned this from the very beginning, didn't you? What are you talking about? This sick, vindictive game you've been playing with me. It's called Destroy Gabrielle, Make Her Life a Living Hell. Gabrielle, will you just listen to what you're saying? It all started when I first met you in Argentina, didn't it? Oh, I was just a little plaything for you. A little sweet, innocent country girl, a little sweet talk, a little roll in the hay. Isn't that it? And that would be enough for somebody, but not for you, not for good old love him and leave him Max. May I, Gabriel, please? And then it was my turn to make the next move, wasn't it? And boy, did I make that move. I came to Lambview to claim my son. Oh, son. God, I thought I could depend on you. 
I thought you'd stand by me. But no, you just... Your true colors again. Hey, goodbye, sweetie. You're on your own. I never meant... You never ever... meant to what, turn your back on me? You never meant to go on your merry way, leaving me desperate to raise my own son? You never meant to come between me and Stevie? You leave Steve out of this. Why okay. should I? Isn't he the best part of this whole charade? I can see it now. Your brother lying in a coma while you were off somewhere seducing his wife. Only trying to prove to yourself that I still belong to you somehow, only to then drop me just as fast. And boy, boy, did you two have a terrific time when he came out of a coma. You remember that part? That's the part when you turned him totally against me. You two had a heyday with Detective Johnson accusing me of, what was it? Adultery and attempted murder. I do not want to relive this now. Will you just calm down? Oh, yes. That was another one of your gambits. Placate Gabrielle. Just calm her down a little bit so that she knows that everything is the best way it should be. Like when you disappeared to Texas, leaving Al and me yet one more time to make it on our own. But you want to know something new? I didn't care that time. I actually was happy about it. I thought, thank God he's out of my life. I can get on with mine, finally. Thank heavens he's halfway across the country so that he won't come and hurt me anymore. Boy, was I mistaken. You stop this. Pull yourself together. Yeah, pull myself together? <laughs> God. Why? Why did you keep him from me when I came out of eternal? Why did you manipulate the judge so that I couldn't have him? Why did you take away the one thing I wanted? <laughs> day I ever met you. You have ruined my life and I will never, never forgive you. <laughs> well, there's no doubt about that. My father was an enormously powerful man. Some people say that he was responsible for making Landview what it is today and I think others in this town curse him for what he did. Well, what do you say? How did you really feel about him? I loved him. I idolized him. But that's changed now, right? I don't know. I don't know. Over the past few years, my eyes have certainly been opened to the man that he really was. He was... he was cruel. He was ruthless. But... But he was my father. And I suppose there's a part of me that will always love him. Well, what else can you tell me about my grandfather? All right. I've only just scratched the surface. There's a lot more to Victor Lord than I can tell you in one short session. Yeah, I guess we could spell spend a whole evening on that. At least. But now is not the time. I'm sure you want to get to the barbecue. Well, I think the children are very anxious to go. I hope you don't mind. No, why would I mind? I've waited 25 years. I can wait a little longer. Megan, before you leave, I'd like to ask you something. Why did you, why did you come here? Why did you show me the letter? Why, why did you want to know about Victor Lord? I wish that I had an answer to all of those questions and that I wasn't confused about who I am. I wish I, I wasn't so confused about this whole situation. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know you need a lot of time. I'm no, sorry. no. It's fine. You did a lot for my father when he was sick. You helped him to hang on until we found that antidote. And all during that time, he kept begging me to accept you as my mother. You are my mother, Vicky. But I, I just... <laughs> you can't expect too much too soon. I, I can't promise any results. I can't promise a, a mother and daughter bonding right away. But I can promise you friendship and understanding. And who knows, maybe a few pictures for the family album. Sarah, I'm, I'm sorry that I got so angry with you. I mean, you know I think you're one terrific lady. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you later.
Well, Sarah, I, I gotta hand it to you. You are, you are something special when it comes to handling other people's problems. Well, I could say it's all in a day's work, Austin, but it's really more than that. What, why is it you're so interested in, in blind folks? I mean, uh, you, you seem to let them get so, so close to you <laughs> and emotional, you know? I know that my methods might seem sort of unorthodox. And I have to admit to you, sometimes being so involved in my patients, it really does wear on me. But I just feel like if getting involved with their lives gets through to them, it's certainly well worth the risk. Definitely well worth the results. What, what I mean to ask you is, I mean, why you, you seem to have some personal stake in this. I do. See, when my sister was a little girl, she went blind. And uh, I just didn't know how to deal with it at first, you know? But I realized that all she needed was for someone to reach out to her. And when I did, she reached back to me. And I realized that I had an effect on her life, short as it was. Um, I think we should probably get going, don't you think? No. I think we should stay right here. Right now. Don't you think you should probably get back to the barbecue? Why? I'm enjoying myself being here with you. They're probably looking for you. I mean, after all, you are the guest of honor. Am I making you nervous? No. No, oh, no not at all. I... But did you, did you think I was trying no. to... No! No, I certainly not. I, uh... Dang! Why do I always have to be such a dang fool hick? Every time I try to say something, every time I try to do something, it always comes out wrong. I mean, I made a fool of myself at the barbecue. Look at what, look at what I'm doing right here in front of you right now. I don't know what, what happened at the barbecue. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm really grateful to Ace and Renee for putting on such a big show for me and actually making me well, feel welcome and all, but I mean, I just don't know how to hack it. I don't know what to do in a shig dig like that. I mean, hey, put me in a prison cafeteria, I'm fine. But stick me in a room full of high top people, I don't even know what the heck I'm doing. Every word comes out of me, I sound like a hillbilly. Austin, I, I think you're being a little hard on yourself. No, no, I'm just being realistic here. I can see the way people are looking at me. Like I'm some kind of an animal, like I'm some kind of a freak from a sideshow. No, no, I, I think you just feel a little out of place. And I mean, once you get a sense of self-confidence... Confidence? What am I supposed to be feeling confident about? Austin, think of everything that you've done since you've been here in Landview. Like what? Like fixing Ace's barn, okay? And restoring his antique car. Y you think... You think people admire me for doing stuff like that? Yes. I do. I really do. And once you have a sense of self-confidence, you're going to begin to see that admiration in people's eyes instead of this mistrust that you think that they have in their eyes. And then you're going to realize that you do fit in and Landview is where you belong. Oh, boy. Oh, God. What? Oh, God. I mean, you, you know how to handle almost any kind of handicap here. Oh, come on. I don't want you to start making me blush. Oh, no, no, no. I, I wouldn't think of doing that. Oh. And I'll tell you what. To, to thank you, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a ride home, and then I'm gonna go right back to Uncle Ace's house, and I'm gonna fix that darn stubborn mule car of yours. <laughs> well, listen, I'll take you up on the ride home, but I am calling a mechanic first thing in the morning. No! Well, I'm not gonna let some guy charge you for kicking a tire once or twice. No, ma'am. You were nice enough to give me a private therapy session here, so I insist the least I can do to repay you is to get your car rolling again. You insist. <laughs> I surely do. Ladies first. Thank you. I'll get the lights. Traumatic blindness, the emotional consequences.
guess you just let go of me. And don't you ever touch me again. I've never seen you this upset. Gee, I'm sorry. I guess I get like this when someone's about to take away the only thing I treasure more than my own life. Gabriel, you were acting. Like what? Like what? Like I'm paranoid? Like maybe I'm crazy? Is that what you want to say? I think maybe you should see some professional help. <laughs> You'd really like that. Get her committed. You'd love it. It's not what I meant. Well, listen here. Go right ahead. Call the men in white. Have them put me away because you know what? I don't really care. Gabriel, just put the phone down. Listen, you don't know the number here. 411. I'll find out for you. What have I got to lose? You can lock me away. I can die. It doesn't no matter. No one is going to lock you up now. Just calm down before you wake up. Before you wake up, Al. Oh. I'm sorry. I guess I got a little carried away. I'll go calm down. No, 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 I don't think that's a good idea. Listen, he heard me yelling. I, I have to reassure him. You are right. a little bit on edge. I think you would only upset him. Did you think I'm capable of taking care of my own son? No, no I think that I should go up to him. Oh, no, no, no. While he's in my house, I will be the one to comfort him. Gabrielle, you are in no shape to go anywhere. You're gonna take him. <laughs> Let me go to him one more time. <sighs> well, I guess I should let you get to the barbecue. The children are very anxious to go. What is it else is in the box? Well, let's see. Picture of my father with my grandparents. My goodness. I wonder if there's a baby picture of Roger on a bearskin rug. <laughs> well, would a baby shoe do? <laughs> oh, my God. You forget how tiny their feet are. Have you shown Roger all of this? No, not yet. I wanted to wait until he got a little better before sending him on a trip down memory lane. You know, this may very well be what he needs to recover. He's been surrounded by only unhappy memories recently. Seeing some happy childhood memories might, uh, might make him feel better. I don't think he needs to see the leather, though. No. You can leave it with me if you, if you like. Yeah. Okay. And I'll show him the rest of the stuff. I'd give anything to see his face when he finds that box. If you don't mind, I'd like to come to the hospital with you. Yeah. You're not going anywhere near that damn hospital. Clint. I was just telling Megan that she should show Roger this box of mementos that she found in Eterna, and I would like to be there when she does. We've got a family barbecue to go to. Or did that slip your mind? No, it doesn't slip my mind. I was going to go to the hospital after the party. When are you going to stop planning our lives around your hospital visits? I really should go. Why don't you hold on to this, and I'll call you later, later about arrangement. Um, never mind. Would you like to tell me what that was all about? believe how rude you were just now. Well, I can't believe how rude you, you're being to your own kids. Kevin and Joey and Jessica have been waiting patiently to go to their grandpa's barbecue, and what have you been doing? Sitting around here chatting. How dare you imply that I have been ignoring my own children? In case you have forgotten, Megan is my child, too, and we have not just been chatting, as you put it. No, that's right. You've been making plans to run off to the hospital with her to see Roger. Megan is finally starting to trust me. She has finally started to think about accepting me as her mother. And yet you barge in here and you scare her off like that. Well, I am real sorry about that, but I'm sure you'll come up with some way to make it up to her. Now, can we just drop the whole damn thing and get to the barbecue? No, we are not going to drop it, and I have no intention of going to any barbecue until you tell me what is bothering you. I told you. The kids have been after me to get going. Pa is probably over there wondering why the hell we haven't shown up. No. No, it's not that. It's something much more than that, because you've been on edge ever since you got out of bed this morning. 
Please, Clint, just tell me what it is. All right, you want to know what's bothering me? I'll tell you. But I gotta have a straight answer from you, Vicky. Are you still in love with Roger Gordon? What? You heard me. I said, are you still in love with Roger Gordon? Now, I heard you in a hospital. I heard you. Tell him that you love him. When? Yesterday in a hospital. Now, is it true? Did you mean it? Clint, the man was dying. He needed hope. He needed something to live for. That's why I told him what I I want to know if you meant it. Is that the way you really feel about him? I, I can't believe that you would do this to me. That you would take a remark that I made to somebody out of concern for that person and blow it all out of proportion. Don't play me for a fool, Vicky. I know what I heard. Now, I want to know if it's true. Do you still love Roger Gordon? Yes. I'm sorry, Clint. There is a part of me that still loves him. Hey, sleepyhead, what are you doing here? All right. I just thought I'd take a nap in that. Come over here, wait for you. Mm, I'm glad you did. Yeah. So am I. So, how'd everything go with your, uh, your patient? Well, it was kind of rough. He's a good kid. He's going to be all right. Mm. He just needs to learn how to work with his blindness, you know, instead of fighting against it all the time. Anyway, I was just glad to be able to get over there. If it hadn't been for Austin, no, I... Austin? What does Austin have to do with any of this? Well, my car broke down. And he was nice enough to take me over to the center and then bring me home. Why didn't you come to the party and ask me? Because I didn't want to spoil your good time. Anyway, why are we sitting here talking about where we've been and how we got there? I'd rather concentrate on us. Oh, well, I like it. Mmm, much better. You know, have I told you that, um, I just can't wait to, to get through all my daily responsibilities and then just get here to you. Lately, all I seem to think about is just being alone with you. And, um... <laughs> Me too. When I can manage to come up for air. Yeah, things have been kind of tough for you lately, haven't they? <sighs> yes. Yes, they have. I've been worried about you. Thanks. I never would have been able to make it through all this without you. God, I love you so much. Hey, Doc. Yeah, it's me, Austin. Yeah, hey, how's your business now that you're on the outside? Well, I need a little favor. I need you to send me uh, a special drug. Well, it's uh, it's for the old uh, eyeballs. Are you all right? I'm fine, but I'm soaking wet. I feel what? a little bit waterlogged myself. I'm going to the bathroom to get some towels. Yeah, I'm going to call downstairs and chew the hell out of somebody. Hey. The bathroom is one of the disasters. It's drenched in here. Did you have any idea that this place was in this bad of shape? Yes, I called the managers and I told them about this. They said, here, they said they were going to take care of it. Yeah. I guess they didn't. I don't, I don't think the rain had something to do with it. Hello? Kelly, this is Bob Buchanan. Listen, I'm calling from uh, Sarah Gordon's suite. Can you hold on one second? No, don't, don't you dare put that phone down. Yeah. Listen here, pal. I just thought you'd be interested to know that uh, we just got a shower of plaster and a ton of water dumped on our heads in here. And while, while I'm at it, I'll add that there's about six feet of water in the shower, in the bathroom, too. Huh? I'm well aware that we're up on the top floor. You, what, no, no, you hold on a second. Where is Miss Gordon supposed to stay while you're sending somebody up here to just survey this whole situation? Well, you better get on your switchboard. You tell everybody in this hotel that they better have an umbrella handy. Everybody.
every room in this place is all booked up. Hey. Okay, I can just stay at Megan's for a while. You know, there's something that I've been thinking about. What? what? How'd you like to move in with me? How's he doing? I calmed him down. He went back to sleep. I thought you were bringing him down. And I wanted him to finish his nap. He gets awfully cranky if he doesn't have it several hours a day. Perhaps you could come back later. I've got other things to do later. That's all right. How about tomorrow? Will you quit fighting this and face facts? I have custody of Al. And this stalling is not going to change that. I'm not stalling. I'm thinking of Al. No, you're not. You're thinking of yourself again. I'm taking him home. No, Max, you can't. Will you face it? It's over. Accept it. As long as I have a breath in my body, I will not let you take my son if you try to get any closer to those you'll steps, I swear. You'll huff and you'll and you'll blow my house down. No more of your idle threats, okay? I'm tired of them. another man no no i never said that i never said i was in love with him i said a part of me still loves him oh, oh, oh there's a difference yes oh. there's a very big difference darling you have to understand this i was 17 years old when i met roger and fell in love with him we had a child together and then we were we were torn apart you didn't know any of this until a few weeks ago no i didn't but the point is i know it now when all those memories came back to me, the feelings came back to me, too. Look, Roger and I share a past. We share a child. And we never had a chance to resolve all those feelings from all those years ago. We have to resolve them now, and we have to figure out where we go from here. Why didn't you tell me what happened in the hospital? Why'd I have to drag it out of you? Because I don't think that's something you just tell your husband. I think it's difficult to understand. <laughs> I understand it perfectly. I, uh, I found out what I want to know, what I asked you. You're in love with Roger Gordon? No. Yes, yeah. Well, at least a part of you is. But which part, Vicky? Part that used to love old Glenn? No, darling, no. No, you no I don't want to hear any more explanations. I mean, uh, you don't have to hit old Clint with a brick wall. Sweetheart, please calm down. I don't tell me to calm down. And you can save your sweethearts for Roger Gordon. No, Clint, please don't. Roger and I were married. 